Welcome back to the most idiotic modeling channel on all of YouTube. Uh, we're about half BSing and half modeling down here, but uh, I don't know, some people come for that. Uh, I've determined, uh, screw it with like inserting the periscopes uh, after the fact. I'm, what I did is I painted them in some uh, clear green from Tamiya and then uh, gloss cleared them, a little TS-13 from Tamiya and a little two millimeter wide masking tape across the lens so that way surrounding the lens and the sides and everything they'll get the the NATO black base coat treatment and then you know some olive drab and whatnot uh, I think I, in, for the headlights I was thinking of doing um, blue tack in there uh, I'm I'm on the fence I could either do blue tack in there or I could uh, just glue the lenses on with masking tape over them um, and, uh, do that. I think, I don't know, that, I always worried the masking tape would, like, lift up a little bit around the edges of the bulb, you know, the lenses, and I'd get some seepage in there. Uh, you could clean that off with a fine Q-tip and some, uh, thinner at, after the fact, and then these are definitely, definitely getting, maybe getting, maybe, possibly, I don't know, either straight, maybe masking tape. Uh, maybe that, or maybe liquid mask. We'll see. Uh, we're gonna make some progress. We've got, we've got. Okay, we've got this to the point where we don't need that battery pack flopping around in there. Um, where the upper fits nicely to the lower hull. Okay. So, with these glued in, I can reach the 30 cab pretty easily to remove it and install it. So I'm gonna pull the 30 out. Um, like I said, I'll figure out the lens masking, uh, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and just glue the upper onto the lower. Just get it over with. Um, I think? I don't know. Probably. Might as well. Uh, so we're gonna do, do stuff. Alright, so welcome back to the, to the, to the train wreck that is me building models on this channel. I hope you all enjoy it. Like and subscribe, blah, 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 hey, hey, again, like and, I, it's like I have to say it, I don't know, people don't always tell me to subscribe, I'll click the button if I like what they do, I guess, I don't know, stick around, well, she's all glued together, uh, yep, there we go, all, all one piece now, uh, and we've masked off our front headlights, and we've masked off our rear taillights. The LED gets blown out by the camera. It is, it is not, <laughs> it's not quite that bright in real life. It, it is bright enough. Uh, also, there was a pattern of black paint over uh, the rear taillight blackouts. So it was kind of like four little tiny triangles of red and everything else was black on that lens. So it's very small and I'm not very f good at really fine hand painting, but uh, once we unmask the taillights when we're done, I'm going to, to make an attempt, an attempt will be made, at just painting those little triangly bits um, and painting everything else with uh, flat black um, or rubber black maybe would be good to kind of subtle out those taillights a little more. Oop, ick up, here we go. It was not a burp, Germany. Is that one, that one German guy still, he's on my nerves, he's on my mind when he complained when I burped on a tank build video. It's it very unsettling. So, we'll turn off our lights, and uh, I guess we're pretty much done with the upper hull. Uh, I am going to put the uh, side view uh, mirrors on now. I'm going to put them in the stowed position. Um, now that this thing's kind of together, we're not going to be flipping it over anymore. I, th I thought those would just be kind of like waiting to be snapped off. And I actually forgot to go glue a couple little guys on the sides of these uh, headlight brush guards. <clears throat> and, hmm... We could put a little chain on them. They did have little chains on them. But then I'm going, I'm putting chains on all the fuel caps. I think I'm going to do this, the everyman build. Um, some people are going really, really into good, fine detail. It's amazing work. Uh, they're doing all the little chains and things. I love it. I love it. And I got some good advice on, you know, putting this thing together and gluing these uh, two center uh, periscope hatches shut because really no tank ever ran them open. Um, and that's that. So, and we could... Let's just pop the 30 cal out now, so we don't accidentally paint it with the rest of the tank. Um, we're gonna we're gonna paint that separately, just like all the stowage. Oh, how I love painting stowage! I think everyone could feel the sarcasm come through YouTube on that one. Okay, all right, back to building. Uh, I'm gonna get started on the turret, I believe. Woohoo! We'll be right back. 
Okay, here's where a heat gun will come in handy for you. Um, we've got our, our little side, right here. We've got our little side view mirrors here. We got one in the stowed position, um, but if we put this little guy on, it's not stowed. It, it needs to rotate down, but then the little base can't glue on. So, hello heat gun. Um, I'm not gonna do this live. It's a fiddly thing, um, but basically, you gotta heat things up. Let's see here. When it just starts getting hot, just start rotating. Turn off your heat gun, and we're gonna I'm gonna see how this looks. I guess I just did it live, ish. Um, hmm, pretty close on the first attempt, um, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to play with this a little more and then we'll get her, we'll get her glued down, but you, you gotta, you gotta heat it so you can rotate the sucker down, but, uh, not that hard to do. Anyone has a heat gun, I'm pretty sure. If you don't have one, Harbor Freight, 10 bucks probably. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry. Inflation. Uh, $13.99. Okay. We'll be right back. Okay, well, uh, my Chinese, uh, my ghetto Chinese food is on the way. Um, these rear skirts, I saved them for later. Um, mine, these were probably the hardest part of the kit to put together so far, because mine were very warped. Um, I don't know if it was just my kit or a lot of kits. The other thing I noticed is, um, if you look at these instructions right here, see that? Watch, look at that area. Okay, we're putting things together. Putting things together. Okay, we're putting things together. That area is still like that. We're putting these together. That area is still like that. Now, we're putting the rear skirts together and on. And, oh wait, what the hell is that? Yeah. Yeah, those were omitted from the instructions. Gluing those on. Um, I, I, uh, instruction failure. I mean, this is what Andy's first full kit. Takam's been doing this a long time, though, so that's... I mean, even to me, it issues addendums sometimes, as does, uh, I think, uh, Bandai. I've, I've seen an addendum or two with Bandai. But yeah, they don't tell you what part number those are or, or where they, you know, when to put them on. Uh, they're, they're pretty easy to figure out. They're, they're on the R tree. I, f I forgot exactly which number they were. I'm, I'm a bad YouTuber. I'm sorry. Okay. But yeah, so those go on there. They're easy to figure out. You'll see them on the sp on the sprue, you'll cut them off. They, they they only go on in one way. Rivets facing in. There's a little oval uh, locating pin that goes in an oval hole. And you just center the other pin. It, they don't really self-center perfectly. You have to just kind of do it yourself by eye. And then these two parts, R28 and R29 in my kit, R28 was horribly warped. Um, when I say horribly, I'm talking like... Based on the standards of the rest of this kit, or a Tamiya, or a Bandai kit, they were really badly warped. R29 was not as badly warped as R28, but it was still pretty, pretty warped. Um, so to deal with that, we just used our heat gun, um, you know, and we just brrr, warmed them up and just gave them a little, little bit of a bend, and you know, a couple times. You want to do little, a little at a time when playing with a heat gun, because otherwise you'll turn your part into goo. So, uh, yeah, but we did that, and uh, we, we've we gotten reasonably good results out of that. There's a tiny gap here and a tiny gap here. I don't know if that's supposed to be there. Possibly, probably, since these are the, the fender skirt things. But, uh, yeah, they went on. They went on fine. Uh, just, it wasn't uh, wasn't the easiest thing to, to, to put together right there, that part. Uh, they, were, they were warped. So, fair warning, R28 and R29 on your kit might be warped if they are um if you don't have a heat gun okay let's say listen let's say you've been saving up all year to buy yourself like a cool model at one point during the year and you know you're on a very strict budget i have a friend who's on an extremely strict budget like so strict in fact that uh you know i'm selling some gundams and he's like oh do you have anything cheap and i said no it's all master grade stuff but i said i got this thing i'll send you and uh he's like oh good i could buy it next month this is a $10 kit. It's not an expensive kit. But I'm sending it to him for free. I'm paying the shipping as just a, a you know, hey, thank you for your service. He was injured in the military. 
Uh, he's part of the Hobby Time Modelers. He's, he's a damn nice guy. He's annoying as all sin. Oh my God. Dear God, Eric, you are a pain in the ass. But, but either way, so where was I going with that? Um, yeah, you, so you saved up all year. You might not have the money for a heat gun, at, even a Harbor Freight. And I ran a Harbor Freight heat gun for over a decade. Um, if so, hot water. I think most people that have bought this model kit have the ability to make hot water. One way or the other. Um, but you want it, like, nearly boiling. So just, like, curry or boil it on the stove or whatever the... Curry, yeah, another expensive thing. But either way, make hot water. Um, and then, you know, dip them in the hot water. Hold them there for 10, 15 seconds. Not boiling, but, you know, in a coffee mug. And then you can you can, you can can uh, bend them into, into shape a little better. There's my tip for uh, bending plastic on a budget. Just freaking hot water, guys. Okay, um, my ghetto Chinese food is arriving momentarily. I'll be right back. After eating a bunch of, of God knows what, you know, cholesterol and saturated fat and random hydrogenated products that we shouldn't be putting in our bodies, but it tastes so good. Mmm, 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 mm, ghetto Chinese food. Uh, an American staple. Okay, well, we'll be back. This thing is, it's coming together beautifully. I'm going to glue as many things on as I can other than stowage um, in this build before I bust it apart to paint it, put it back together, and paint all the stuff. You know how it works with the building a tank. Uh, so we'll be right back after some horribly delicious, bad for you, but good for the soul Chinese food. Adios. Well, be right back. Okay, well, we're good and full of Chinese food. I I always regret that after that happens. What? Oh, it's the alarm. 15-minute warning for the live stream. Hopping on the Hobby Time Modelers live stream, the Friday night stream. Link in the description below. Um, starting to build up the tow cable. Uh, Andy gives us some copper wire here, which is uh, actually very nice. It's quite flexible. I was worried it would be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but uh, it seems easier than the stainless steel. It looks like they were it was cut to the correct length. So I'm going to get the other uh, the other whatever eye thing uh, glued on to the uh, other end, and we're going to start mounting this on the tank. Uh, in all the reference I can see, for the most part, this was painted OD with the tank. Uh, it wasn't like, uh, a lot of times with Tamiya kits, you'll see me painting things, uh, you know, like metallic gray, uh, the cables. Uh, this one, I'm just going to go with the OD. I could always go over it by hand afterwards with a brush and, and you know, do a little metallic gray, almost dry brushing over the cable. I think I'm going to do something over the cable, a little bit of a, of a dry brush metallic effect anyway. Uh, after the fact. But yeah, there we are. So, I mean, these tiny, itty, bitty, microscopic, this is the little little clamp that holds the tow cable down. So, that's very small and easy to lose. Thank you. Um, yeah. Very, very nice. Very detailed kit. I mean, it's... Listen, I think uh, all I've built is to me a full option tanks. And some are better than others. But none are of uh of the detail level of this uh i when i built my abrams full option to me i bought an entire trumpeter m1a2 uh sep v1 abrams kit from trumpeter just to swap detail parts off of to add detail to the tamiya um abrams because it was just it was just lacking i mean it was a fine kit it went together perfectly it looked good good okay good but uh yeah need a lot need a lot of work and like the oh the m2 is so much better on the trumpeter the the 30 cal was better on the trumpeter uh it had the bustle rack extension it, had, it was so many they had an apu it had the updated all sorts of better stuff it had than the tamiya abrams full option 16 scale kit had um so yeah we real we pillaged that thing luckily i got a water damaged box uh, trumpeter kit, so it was pretty cheap, so I didn't feel too bad just swiping fancy parts off of it, and basically turning the kit mostly useless, I guess. Um, but it's sitting in a box. Eh, someone might want it. I don't know. Anyone wants the leftovers of a trumpeter Abrams and is willing to pay a fairly hefty shipping price because it's a big, heavy box still, uh, hit me up at, uh, the email address that's in my description below. If you're interested in the leftovers of a trumpeter M1A2 Abrams. 
I don't even think I have enough links to build a full set of tracks. Like, I, I swiped some of those for stowage. And all, all the best parts, I just... Off the sprues. But the whole tank is there for the most part. So, either way, let me know. I'll be back uh, after our live stream. And uh, we'll continue on part four. Four. Not five. Four. Four. Keep in there, thumb. Stay. Stay. We could do, like, little puppets. Part four. Okay, we'll be right back. Oh, I'm frozen, and I'm sore. Oh, we just got back from, uh, uh yeah, my voice is a little, uh, hoarse-sounding, uh, because I was at the company holiday party. This, stop texting me when I'm recording, people. Um, I was at the company holiday party, and, you know, there's music and talking, and you're talking over the other noise, and... By the end of the night, you don't even realize you have uh, lost your entire voice almost. That being said, we're back to work in the frozen basement. Um, getting some turret stuff done. Okay, we got our little periscopes in, some masking tape on them. Nice detail on that. I mean, really. I'm hitting the camera with a little antenna. Sorry about that. Really spiffy detail. You have the option of putting a spare barrel for the 50 in there. I opted not to. Like, there, they already used it. Um, yeah, this thing's sweet. I'm not uh, making this hatch open or functional. Uh, this one's going to be riding open, and I'm going to build the figure and put the figure in it. And uh, I'm not going crazy on the inside of the turret, okay? Don't don't get your panties in a bunch. Uh, but yeah, this, is, this thing's just gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Well, <clears throat> ah, yeah, no, it's not that coof. It's just, uh, I just, yeah, Lottie Ellen, you know how it is. You come home from a wedding, and you've been standing all night in fancy shoes and drinking a lot of alcohol and having loud, loud, and louder conversations with your friends and family, and the next morning you wake up, Flip your legs out of the bed, put your feet on the floor, stand up, and that first groan comes out of you like, Oh, what did I do? Ow, my feet, my legs, my back, my throat, my head. Oh, yeah, physical, mental, everything. My liver is black and blue from that party. But, hey, it's the holiday party, so, you know, what else are you supposed to do except, you know, get pissed drunk? And uh, have a blast, you know, catching up with all your co-workers who uh, I consider family. I've been with them for over a decade at this point, um, and uh, they're a great bunch. Uh, it's meeting new people there. We got new employees I've never met before. That was exciting. They had no idea who I was because there's so many people that work remote. Uh, either way, <clears throat> back to the turret. Stop talking about my damn holiday party. Um <clears throat> We're up to uh, step 1920, basically done. Um, and then 21, we got to build the breach, all right? And, uh, doesn't look too bad. It looks more tedious than it really is. Like, when you just slowly start snipping parts off, they all just glue together. No big deal. There's no real gotchas here so far with the turret. Everything goes together just fine. I had no problems whatsoever here. Um, you know, unlike, uh, with those, those rear fender things, there was an addendum added, um, for one of the stages, uh, but it was added to the, to the decal bag, the decal bag on, I guess, slightly later production Andy's kits, uh, about those little, uh, inner fender skirt area thingy bobbers. So, whatever, no big deal, we figured it out. Um, they're on the forum, it's, uh, the, sorry, the Facebook groups, everyone's aware of it now pretty much, um, but yeah, not a big deal again. Uh, no kit's perfect, but this one is damn fine. I got, I like this kit a lot. Uh, I could find fault with anything. Anyone could find fault with anything. Some people just, they just don't like it. I, I'm going more on, does it fit? Are the instructions good? These instructions are not what I'm used to. Uh, I'm more of used to Tamiya and Bandai, or Tamiya, and Bandai instructions, and they're absolutely amazing. Um, the Takam instructions, purely visual, 
Um, very little wordage, none really. Uh, the yin-yang symbols, that means either or. So like, either this plate or that little st stubby antenna. But we got a nice big antenna here. And uh, it wasn't until later in life where uh, the M4s got like dual radio antennas really for the most part. Like, one antenna was about it back in the day. I think these the Israelis and, the, and their M50, M51, they might have had dual antennas in there. Uh, so I went, I went and opted for the little plate. And that looks nice. There's our little plate. And then uh, you have either or options in a couple other spots. Uh, yeah, you have an either or gun barrel or just the holders for the spare gun barrel. I want just the holders um, to not have the gun barrel there. Uh, but yeah, those are the either or. The yin yang symbol means do this or that. Here's a really good example of it in the future is uh, either or for building, like for assembling the upper turret and the mantlet. If you want to do it with a mantlet cover, cover you you do this with the with the rain cover, whatever the hell you want to call it, or without the cover, you do it this way, and you glue all those little bastards on right there. Um, I think I'm going to do it with the cover. I would like the look of the cover. And this is a static model, so I'm, I'm going to do the cover. Because uh, it's not a garbage to me, a piece of rubber thing, you know, like for the, the Centurion. I, I didn't like that piece of rubber. It, it was no bueno. Uh, but either way, there we go. We're coming along, making some progress. Uh, I, I apologize for, uh, I've been very busy uh, with the holiday stuff. So I'm doing what I can to get this thing done. I don't think it'll be done by the end of the year. So uh, no New Year's celebration with a fully built and painted tank. But we'll do what we can. The holidays, it, family comes first. And the holidays, you know, there you go. They just eat into the hobby schedule. That's uh, inevitable. But either way, be right back with something. Okay, yeah, just listening to the, uh, you know, the, the march from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. What a great, what a great score. Um, so our breach is done. Uh <laughs> Taco makes a lot of full interior kits, I think. Uh, this thing, <laughs> this is pretty awesome. This this is slick. Uh, it goes together perfectly fine. Obviously, you know, mind your nub marks, uh, glass nanofiles, get your little nubs off of there. Um, you're not really going to see it. I mean, you know, you're not going to see this part for sure. The bottom, you're barely going to see kind of this area here when you're done painting it. Uh, go to the level of detail you want. Be my guest. I'm just saying. Uh, the guy's going to be sitting in there. And uh, you're not going to see a whole ton of this thing. Even if you pull the little driver out. Uh, but it's beautiful. Now, um, the barrel. Okay, the metal barrel. Uh, just a quick tip here. Uh, get your favorite uh, power tool here. Uh, get your drill. Chuck her up in the drill. All right, there we go. Eh. Speed two. Uh, 400 grit. Uh, 400 grit to me. Uh... Just a little bit of that action. Okay. Just just to key up the surface. Okay. You can go. Uh, you can go back and forth a little as well. And a little, a little of that. There we go. I, I've brought a rocket launcher to a gunfight. Uh, this is more than you need. You could, you could chuck this up in any little girly, girly drill. Um, but see, we have like a little bit of a crosshatch, almost like a cylinder wall. You see that? Okay, by going this way really fast with the sandpaper, we have a really nice crosshatch of grit, and that's what we're gonna throw our primer on. Now, I am going to use um, uh, Mr. Hobby Metal Primer, okay? Either this, I also have the rattle cans of this. I may get lazy and do that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to throw that on there. Then I'm going to throw a standard uh, gray primer over that. And then I'm going to throw my NATO Black. Um, reason just being, I, I want to make sure I get really good adhesion to the metal. It's easy 
to chip paint off metal if you're not careful. Before you paint this, also clean it very well with rubbing alcohol. Um, but yeah, that's it. Step 21 is done. Our breach is absolutely gorgeous. It's a lovely kit. Um, you know, the full interior tanks are really cool, but you gotta like display them blown apart to see all your lovely work inside of there. You know, this guy's gonna be, you know, thereabouts, give or take. You're not gonna see a whole heck of a lot of it. It's, it's just, you're just not. But uh, it's nice to know it's there, I guess. Um, yeah, this would be nice. I think we're gonna paint this like an off-white, or just a white, and just dirty it up a little bit with some, uh, you know, random panel liners and things. But there we are. Okay, breach is cool. There, it's a little fiddly like this bit, but otherwise very, very straightforward. Oh, I've got a horrible nip sprue mark nubby, nubby right there. Don't worry, once this is dried solid, I'll, I'll shave those off with the X-Acto or sand them off with something. Oh, yes, that's quite nice. Okay, well, page 16, step 21. We are done with that. And uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be seeing you next time with more of this lovely tank build. Uh, we have Andy's Tiger 1 on pre-order. Oh, this is a, this is a very detailed... I, I, the Tiger 1's probably going to be just as detailed, of course. I'm so used to building to me a full option tanks. And I, I never said they were absolutely the epitome of detail. I know they're not. Like, like I said, I had to go buy a trumpeter uh, just to steal parts from. Uh, for my Abrams, but man, it's it's a good amount of work. It's a good. This is why I don't build 35th scale tanks. I just little tiny pieces make my teeth just grind. Okay, either way, we'll be back. I'm slowly getting my voice back. Thank you to my cough syrup of Miller Lite. Mmm, really soothes the vocal box. All right. Uh, so we'll be seeing you next time. Like, subscribe, tell a friend, slap your mailman, I don't know, whatever. Just come back and watch the next video, all right? And bring people with you. Uh, two for one discounts, free pizza, if you ever find me. No, I'm just kidding. Don't. I don't need, I'm sure I could get doxxed pretty easily, but whatever. All right, see you next time, everybody. Peace out.